hey guys, this is a guide on how to eliminate glue hair in his guards that I figured that I would make in case anyone was needing some advice or help in order to complete the Jagger task, the Huntsman Path Eraser Part 1, or Relentless, or the Lightkeeper task, Payback, and Overseas Trust Part 1, which all require that we do eliminate glue hair and or his guards. Or even if you guys just wanted to learn how to take out glue hair for fun on your reserve raids, or even to potentially start farming him and his guards for their loot and gear. Now, whatever your group ends up calling this fellow, whether it be glue hard, glue car, glue coast, or glue stick, he's definitely considered one of, if not the toughest overall boss fights in Tarkov. And I may as well throw in a quick tip that may end up helping you guys be more efficient if you are looking to strictly get the kill on him for this task, or even just to farm him, or really to farm any boss in general in Tarkov, is that when you do load into a map in the top right hand corner, if you do look for a red packet loss symbol within the first 30 seconds of your raid, and if it does pop up for you, then usually that will mean that there is no boss that has spawned into that raid. However, it is not 100% accurate, but it is a tip that I figured I would throw in there that may end up helping you out and saving you some time. And it was actually very accurate for me when I was hunting for some of the bosses, especially the ones that you do have to sprint for very long distances to track down. But just be aware that even though it is a way to potentially make yourself more efficient, BSG may end up patching that in the future. So a little information on Gluhar is that I tend to see him running a level 4 attack rig, usually being a TV-110 or an AVS or an A-18, but he can actually have a tank tech, which is a class 5, and usually I do find that he is wearing a level 4 Bastion helmet, or that he's just freeballing it with no helmet at all. And he also has a health pool that is just over 1,000 total, which includes 70 to the head and then 220 to his thorax, so he is pretty tanky and can definitely feel like a bullet sponge when you are shooting him. But the reason why I specify 70 hit points to the head is because with that value, then there is only a few rounds in the game that will be versatile enough to one-tap him to the head and also be capable enough of effectively damaging him through the higher tier armor that he's also capable of using, as well as his guards will probably also be using. And just so that you guys know, he does have six guards that roam around with him, and they will have three different classifications, being an assault follower, a scout follower, as well as a security follower. And then they will have between 40 and 45 head hit points, so much easier to one-tap. However, they do run helmets that span from a Ratnik all the way up to an Alton or a Vulcan. And they can also have a wide array of armor that range from a Paka all the way up to Walking Tank, Level 6 Slicks, the Bralos, or Zucks. So that can definitely complicate things when trying to farm Glue Stick, especially since his guards will typically rush you or flank you together, as they tend to have a unit mentality rather than one at a time. So as for the guns that I tend to recommend, it would be something that fires a 7.62x39 with PP bullets as a minimum, but BP is definitely going to be better. And even though these bullets will not one-tap glue hair, the fact that the guns are going to be automatic will make up for that difference. Or you could always run a Val using SP6, Pab9, or BP, but that will also not one-tap glue hair, but it will put him and his guards down super fast just because of the fire rate and also the pen and damage are very high on that gun. But again, it is quite difficult to get your hands on the good ammo for the VSS and the Val. Your other options and what I do typically run is either going to be an SVD with PS or BT ammo or a DMR like the RSAS, the SR25 or the M1A with preferably M62 since it will one shot glue stick as well as make short work of the potentially heavily geared guards. But you can also get away with M80 since it will technically one shot glue stick to the head however it will just struggle a little bit more against the higher class armor that you can run into with the guards as well as PMCs that you run into. I tend to stay away from the 5.56 and the 5.45 calibers when hunting any boss except for Rashala since it just isn't as forgiving as the bigger calibers and my experiences boss hunting are just overall better when running those bigger calibers. And then the three guns that Gluhar can potentially run are going to be the Ash 12 with either PS12 or PS12B, an M1A with an M80, M61 or M993 or a PP with Luger ammo. So if he is running the M1A or the Ash 12 then it could definitely be a bad day for you if he is running any of the big boy ammo in either of those weapons. Especially with the bug where it does count as double damage then you will just essentially be dead immediately as soon as they hit you. So now I definitely find that the spawn for Gluhar is going to make a difference on how difficult it will be for me to take on him and his guards. And up until recently, Gluhar was only spawning at the K-Train buildings, but now he is back to spawning at a few different locations. So the four spawn areas that Gluhar has the potential to spawn at are going to be at the K-Train buildings, at the food reserve area, which is located under the K-Train buildings, around or inside the Black Bishop and Black Pond buildings, as well as at the White and Black Knight garage areas. And also during events, then they can move the bosses around to different maps. And if you do end up killing Gluhar while he is somewhere else for an event then it will also count towards any task that requires you to eliminate him. So I'll firstly cover the most common spawn area being the K-Train area and anytime that they do end up isolating Gluhar to strictly one spawn on reserve it does tend to be this location. So by me going over this one first just in case they do end up changing him back to one location spawn then you guys will be able to just watch this and then not waste any extra time listening to me but at the time that I am making and posting this guide then he will be back to spawning at all of his locations on reserve. 
So at the K trains, he typically will spawn at the back end area of the K train building closest to the armored train, but he can actually spawn inside the center of the K train buildings as well. And if he is aggroed by PMCs in this area, then he can move all around and chase them throughout this part of the map. I have even had him in the fuel tankers beside the armored train building. So if Gluhar and his guards have spawned at the back of the K-Train, he really is a pretty free kill if you can get yourself inside of the armored train building and have a four times or higher scope. This is actually where I ended up taking him out for my own task the last few wipes, and it is definitely much easier than trying to fight him from inside of the K-Train cars and buildings. But if you do end up spawning on the opposite side of the map and then deciding to take him on instead of rotating around into the armored train building, then it is best to bring lots of grenades and then to push slowly forward from hard cover to hard cover and also to use your grenades to force them to move and then reposition yourself. And a tip for you guys is that if you do end up killing a guard, then you want to listen for any of the other guards pushing because typically they are quite aggressive and have a pack mentality. So usually they will come after you as a pack or even come at you coordinated with flanks and whatnot. Now, in my opinion, it's definitely best to take it slow when fighting Gluhar and his guards from this area if you can. But one of the biggest issues, especially in this part of the map, is that when you are fighting Gluhar and using grenades in order to move up safely, then oftentimes, because of all the noise that you're making, then you will have PMCs and player scavs on the map full sending to try and 30 party you because they are going to know that somebody's fighting Gluhar due to all the commotion. So unfortunately for you, sometimes you won't have the option to play it as slow as what you might want to. And for that reason, fighting Gluhar from within the actual K-Train buildings is probably going to be the most difficult area to take him out from. If it was him alone, it wouldn't be so bad, but just because of him having six guards, it definitely makes it more difficult. But just remember that after you do end up killing Gluhar, then you don't actually have to survive an extract or retrieve any items in order to bring out a raid to hand over. So as long as you do end up getting the kill shot on Gluhar, then you will be able to hand the task over. Now the next spawn location is going to be here in the food storage area underneath the K-Train buildings, and to fight Gluhar and his guards in here, the easiest way is to come from the tunnel entrance that is closest to the night buildings. Just since you will be able to funnel him through this little hallway and then hold a right angle peak as well as use grenades to aggro him. And usually from here you can play it quite slow since you can close all the doors behind you and then you should be able to hear anybody who opens it regardless of if they're crabbing or not. And then have audio cues to be able to protect yourself. Now if Gluhar is down here I pretty much only try and fight him from this one location because I do find fighting him from underneath the hermetic door or from the other large ramp on the opposite side is incredibly difficult due to the lack of visibility and also cover for us whereas the guards are hidden by the darkness and just hidden in amongst the shelves and whatnot. And basically because the AI in this game is able to track you through walls, basically as soon as you peek a centimeter, then usually they will end up killing you before you can even react. So basically the best way to deal with them in this area is to go down into this tunnel and then just try and bait them down this hallway and take them out one by one as they try and rush you. Now onto the third potential spawn for Gluhar, which is the large area around the helicopter that includes the Black Bishop School building on any of the floors there, or inside or around the Black Pond building on also any of the floors in that building as well. Basically, Gluhar can move around depending on if him or his guards were aggroed or not, and in this large area, as long as he is inside of one of these buildings, he is going to be quite easy to deal with. But if he is outside, then my goal is to firstly get myself inside of a building safely and then to get him to chase me inside of the building and funnel him into a room where I can hold a right angle peak because he will have much less area to escape from grenades and typically he will just rush you basically mindlessly and then you can just make quick work of him and his guards as they end up pushing in. And I definitely find that the Black Pond first floor on the far right side of the building is the easiest room to do this at because they will not push around behind you and then look in through the window from outside. Typically, they will just funnel themselves in through the first floor and then come in through the main single entrance of this room. And then you have a right angle peak looking out of this room, so it definitely makes it a lot easier for you. And then for the Black Bishop building, then I will use the ramp, which is on the back side of the school, to climb up to the third floor and then just start clearing the building. And then by coming up on this side, then you will give yourself right angle peaks to look down every single hallway. And I do typically find that this building is quite easy because Gluhar will end up spawning on the second or first floor. And then you can just use grenades to force them to run at you and basically you spray them down while using a right angle peak as they just run at you. And then lastly, Gluhar can spawn over by the night buildings either inside on the first floor or in the front of the white night building or usually he will be inside of the black night on the first floor around the truck or in the storage room which is in the back of this area or he can also be out around the back side of the night building by the campfire or inside of the little tucked away garage that's in the back. And then due to all these different potential spawns and locations where him and his guards can be located, then it can be a difficult area to deal with because you couldn't have clearing one building and then when you are crossing to check the other one, then that's when Tarkov timing kicks in and then you start getting peppered by Gluhar 
And again, just to emphasize, depending on which spawn that Glue Her ends up getting and what building that he's in, then you definitely want to move slowly around the map and then move from hard cover to hard cover. And honestly, you don't really have a choice but to use your right hand peaks because the guards have literal aimbots. So if you end up trying to use a left hand peak, then you will be killed most likely. And just so you guys know, the guards are absolute demons with their grenades. And because there are six guards, then it can feel like you are being legitimately mortar striked from multiple grenades landing all around you at the same time. So I will usually try to use my own grenades in order to keep forcing them out into the open and then pick them off one by one and then lessen Gluhar's numbers and also lessen my chance of being picked off by an off angle by a guard who was basically tracking me through walls because that's how the AI works in this game. And again, once you end up killing Gluhar, then the task will be ready to be turned in immediately. You do not need to collect anything to bring out of the raid to hand over, like with the Rashala, Killa, or Sturman task. So it really doesn't matter if you end up dying after killing Gluhar. So you basically don't have to worry about all the horrible reserve extracts. But of course, I always recommend for you guys to bring in a Red Rebel and a Paracord on this map, and then to use an Armored Tack Rig for your own armor, since D2 is usually vermin infested, and it's definitely best for your own sanity to just avoid that place in general. So hopefully you guys found this guide useful and the information and example clips in the background do help you guys to get this task done. Thank you all so much for stopping by and choosing to watch my video on this. And if you are still here at the end, then I greatly appreciate you and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is just a couple of my different social links in case you guys wanted to connect more easily. I am primarily streaming on Twitch now multiple nights a week. So if you do want to connect with me or my community, that would probably be the easiest way to do so. And if you do come over to the Twitch and you want to join the Discord community, then just type exclamation point Discord or Cord in the chat in order to get an invite link. And if you don't use Twitch, then I do have a link in the picture as well as a link below in the description. And we are growing and currently have an active and welcoming community with people of all experience and skill levels. So there will always be someone who could help to answer any questions that you may have. As always, thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching the video, and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day.